Welcome back to another quick tutorial uh, in Cinema 4D. I'm just going to show you guys how to do just kind of a cool emitting particle swarm uh, following along a spline. Um, there's several different ways you can do this with a cloner, but I'm going to show you how to do it with an emitter. Uh, so if you're not familiar, um, under simulate particles, we have this thing called an emitter. And I'm just going to grab for this a sphere that I'm going to size down fairly small, and I'm just going to put it as a child on my emitter. Um, and you'll notice it is emitting but we have to go to our emitter particle settings and put show objects on and very quickly we've got something here that's shooting out various particles. Um, I'm gonna add a little extra speed to this and I'm gonna kinda just change the variation of a few things just a, just a little bit just to give it a little a little different effect and then we're gonna up the birth rate editor and the renderer so they appear when we do render the same way and I'm just gonna fire out a bunch of particles like that all right so uh, not doing anything cool yet but um, we'll get to something cool here um, the next thing we need to do is I'm gonna create just like a helix here that we're gonna size out quite a bit and back up our view so we can frame up the whole emitter and then we're going to, under the emitter highlighter, we're going to go to simulate and we're going to go to this, uh, sorry, we're going to go to spline wrap here under our uh, add bend objects. I guess there's just all uh, another set of effectors. And under spline wrap, I'm going to put this down here, not as a child, but below the emitter just for the sake of organizing here. Um, for the spline wrap, I'm going to make the helix the spline. And nothing's going to happen yet. We also have to create a null where the emitter and the sphere are going to live. I'm going to reorder it so it looks good. We'll just call this the emitter particles. Cool. Now, what we can do is we can take the spline wrap and put it as a child of the null. Okay, so once you have this spline wrap in here, um, if you just play it forward, you're gonna see just these metal barbs appearing, but you're not gonna get any kind of uh, wanted effect here. Um, and what I did really quickly is I sized up my helix quite a bit larger. I'm using 630 and 780. Uh, just to give it a little more space, we could size this back down to kind of where I had it. Um, but, uh, Basically, the way you're going to drive this is going to be this from slider. Um, so instead, what I can do is here, uh, I can adjust the from to be zero and add a keyframe. And I can go all the way to the last frame and I can adjust this to finish out somewhere at 100. Um, so now if, if I play this forward, you'll notice I get this thing swimming through here, kind of. But what we really want to do is start it at 100 and finish it at zero. So now it starts kind of growing from one place and starts going into its swimming maneuver throughout the spline, okay? So pay attention to the hierarchy here and just kind of pay attention to that, that from slider is really, really key. And then if we want to give it something kind of cool to look at, let's just add a new material. And I'm going to go into the luminance channel. I'm just going to add like a gradient. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of color. So we'll add like a blue, like a red, a yellow, maybe like a green. Oops. Purple. Cool. And then let's add a little bit more reflection to it just to give it a little bit of, you know, something more to look at. Um, I don't know. It depends on what kind of particle you're trying to create, but uh, we'll, st we'll try something like that. Now as we watch it grow, now we're starting to get a little bit of color. Um, and if we kind of stop this and take a look, now we're kind of starting to get a more interesting, cool particle flow thing um, but you'll notice that it looks fake because we don't see any motion blur 
so one thing you can do is um, we can just go in here and add the vector motion blur effect in our renderer and then we can also go into our tags and um, let's see under, is it motion camera oh, yeah, motion blur and add this to our uh, to our emitter and now let's play it and I still don't think we're gonna get any motion blur yet so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to first things first let's just zoom in because you're not gonna get good motion blur from further away but you can see I don't have any any blur on these particles so we need to take our emitter and we need to make it editable and that's also gonna make it align better and it's also gonna prevent these particles at the back from flying off. They're gonna stay in this fixed position when you do that. And now that we have it editable, edit, editable, um, we might need to add a camera here to see the motion blur. And now I think we're starting to get some motion blur on these, uh, on these particles. Um, we might actually need to just, might not show up in the, uh, there we go. So it wasn't showing up because I was in the um, picture viewer, but or I wasn't in the picture viewer. But when you when you set it to render, you will see this motion blur. So you can see the difference between these particles and these particles here. Um, so to show you kind of an example of what I set up uh, here is just uh, I put a camera at one end of the helix and kind of pulled back as this thing swim, started forming. And you can see I've got this kind of cool stretchy feeling you know candy cane growing type thing there's a lot of different things you can do with this depending on what you want to use as your spline wrap uh, I mean, you could come in here and you could use text uh, you know we could try that out we could try adding um, if we back up and add like I don't know let's just leave I guess we can just leave it as text and you're gonna to want to make this pretty big so that it doesn't, so that you can actually understand, you know, tell what the word is. And if we go into our uh, spline wrapper again, this might not work because it's there. We go. Okay, it'll work. And if we let this grow, now it's gonna kind of do this interesting particle swarm all around the world, word, and kind of fill up in an interesting way um, until it's it's created the word text and it'll just kind of keep growing um, depending on how many frames you add to it and what your acceleration is for particle growth um, but it'll I have, I have a keyframe there for the from to stop but um, if I can, let's see if I drag this out I'll get more particle growth I guess I'm just extending it but so that's kind of a cool effect too so I mean if you want to do something interesting with your letters um, you know, I kind of, I kind of like that effect. Um, we could, uh, we could have gone back before we made the emitter editable, and you know, sped it up so that it would fill in the text a lot quicker. Um, but um, anyway, that's just kind of a quick tutorial on how to do some cool particle animations um, using the emitter and uh, just aligning things to a spline. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.